how am I, how is it that I am not giving the last pass people who I want to trust, but do we trust everyone who works there? Do we trust everyone who's, who has ever worked there in the past, who will ever work there in the future? Um, do we trust, you know, that like, that somebody won't break into their servers and, and in the middle of the night and, you know, have this huge, massive win of getting all of the username and passwords for everyone who is using LastPass. So the way this works is, and the, re- what, the reason I'm using it is I now understand how it works and why it's absolutely trustable is that very much like Jungle Disk, which we've talked about in the past, all the encryption is done locally. That is, at no point does LastPass receive anything other than what looks like a block of pseudo-random noise. We've talked about how when you take so-called plain text, the normal readable, human readable, you know, your username as an email address and your actual password, and you encrypt it with a good cipher, it turns it into, under the influence of a key, which is the key to the whole process, under the influence of the key, it turns it into noise. Absolute pseudo-random bits that mean nothing. So, so that's what the last past system gets and saves. It is absolutely no use to anyone because they never get the key. And they've gone to great lengths to arrange never to get the key. When, when you log into their system, you do so with your username, which is your email address and your password. That's, that's put together, con- concatenated into one long string. They, they sanitize the username a little bit. They lowercase it and they remove the so-called white space, you know, spaces and things. That just makes it a little more robust. The password, they don't change at all. So that remains case-sensitive, and special char- special characters and things can be in there. They leave that alone. But, for example, email addresses are not case-sensitive. You can, you know, you can change the, the case in an email address. And so since they're using their email address, people's email addresses as their password users might not be careful about the case in their email addresses, so they make that case insensitive. They always lowercase the the email address ASCII characters, the alphabetic characters. So they, they put all this together into one blob. Then they do something called a hash. They use SHA-256, which is a... Uh, SHA stands for Secure Hashing Algorithm. The listeners that have... have been listening to the podcast for years, know what that means. For people new to this, a hash is what's called a one-way function. You can take any amount of text or anything, binary data, anything, any amount of data, and run it through this process called hashing, which always results in a fixed size thing, sort of a fixed size token. And what's unique about this is it's, it is computationally infeasible is the technical jargon that cryptographers use to go the other direction. That is, it's, it's, it's very easy to put stuff into this, think of it like sort of as a meat grinder, but it's impossible to ungrind the meat. It's, it's been ground up. It's been completely, it's been turned into this 256-bit result such that anything you change in the input changes everything about the bits in the output. Yet anybody, no matter how much they want to, no matter how much they, they look at it, they can't go the other direction. So the idea is that, that your, when you log in, when you give your system your last pass username and password, the first thing it does is it runs it through this SHA, it, it 
lower cases the, the, the email address, removes the white space, um, adds the password, and then it does this hash to it, turning it into a 256-bit blob, which tells the blob holder nothing about your username and password. It's just been, it's like it's been digested into this thing. In fact, hashes are called digests also for that reason. What that is, is that is your cryptographic key. That's the key which your system will use both to encrypt your, your data, which is being shared with LastPass corporate, and also to decrypt it when LastPass corporate sends this back to you. They're holding the encrypted results of your own personal database just because that's what they do. That, that's the service they provide, essentially, that and creating all these amazing plugins for everything anyone's ever heard of. So, but, but what they're holding, they have no ability to decrypt. They never get the key. Um, that never leaves your system. Now, they do need to know that it's you. That is, you, they, 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 need to, they need to know that it is you who are logging in so that they, and so that there needs to be an authentication process so you identify yourself to them. But we don't want them to get the key. So what they do is they take that key, the cryptographic key, and they add your password to it. That is, they concatenate your password to your cryptographic key and they hash that. So they do another one-way function on your crypto key with your password, which they don't know because they never get it, but they get another blob. So, so this second blob, the second output from the hash, that's your unique ID. That is the only way to get that is if you take your username and password, hash it, then add the password to that and hash it again. So it absolutely depends upon both of those pieces of information. So then your username and that goes to LastPass to identify you. And because that contains your password twice hashed into it, nobody who doesn't have your password, even if they have your email address, is able to produce that blob. So you have to have your email address and your password run through this hash twice to get that blob. But notice that your cryptographic key, which is sort of the, the, the first byproduct of that, because that's the output from the first hash, that goes into the second hash but is lost in the hashing process. So thanks to it being mixed with your password. So the last pass people never get your crypto key. They get a different unique token that identifies you to them so that you're able to log on securely to their facility. And these guys are so paranoid that they don't even save that on their servers. <laughs> they don't even save that special logon blob, the output from that second um, hashing process. Instead, they, at the time you create your account, they come up with, they use a random number generator at their headquarters to create a unique 256-bit token, which they save with your account. And whenever you're logging in, they take this 256 blob you're sending them, that's the result of these two hashing processes, they add that to this unique 256K random number, and they hash that, and that's what they compare to what's stored with your account. So, which is to say, they never store that logon token. They store the result of hashing that logon token with a unique 256-bit value that they created for you. So they dynamically see if it's the same, and they, but they never save your logon token. They just, they don't want it. They don't need it. So they're dynamic. They're able to perform a dynamic check whenever you need to authenticate, but they don't keep it 
statically. 